Hello everyone and welcome to another Roaring Records tutorial. That's right, uh, we're going to add it again. And what we're going to look at today is using a internet tool called the One Motion Chord Player and how we can access this, build a chord progression, and then use it in Logic. <clears throat> so here we go. This is what we're taking a look at. This is the One Motion Chord Player. And let me just go ahead and show you some things about the One Motion Chord Player, and then we'll dive into how it works. So right now, we are in the key of G major. Uh, the style is we're going to play each chord once. The instrument is an upright piano, and all we do is hit play. And there we go. We've got a one, six, four, five progression. Um, the nice thing here is when you have selected the key that you're playing in, that you can actually see the diatonic chords right down the middle. These are your most common chords, and then there are color chords on each side, which is great. And when you're ready to work with the chords, you just select the chord, drag it down, and place it where you want it to go. That is all very, very cool. I love those features. Um, if you want to, you can hit this Explore button here, and it actually gives you some presets based on famous songs that you might know. A couple different pages of presets uh, from famous songs you might uh, be familiar with, for sure. So Ed Sheeran, and here we go. You can click these through, play it. You're like, oh, that's what I really want. And then you can open project. And now this has dropped us into the key of D major. Now, if you'll look down here, you'll notice that this is broken into measures and or beats, if I should say. So this is actually a measure with the line there. So each one of these is two measures. And you have something that sounds like this. So that's cool. Now, if you want to trade out chords, you can most certainly come in and start uh, swapping out chords just by clicking and dragging. Or you can come down here to the edit feature. The edit feature will uh, allow you to make changes to the bass note. So you can actually do inversions of chords, which is cool. You can change the chord name to whatever you want it to and change the duration which is fun, or you can hit edit all. And here you will see a screen that can be either in the units of bars or in beats. I personally like the beats option. So if you were to do this, then you could have something like uh, four beats of B minor followed by four beats of E minor, then eight beats uh let's change this up even more eight beats uh four beats of g four beats of g sus two and then say okay and now we've got a new progression down here and it feels like this when we play it into the beats and I'm going to say two of A, two of B minor, and then four of A. So we've just got a, a totally wild progression here. So let's see what we've got. And maybe I want it in an instrument like the Wurlitzer. Here we go. fun progression and you're like okay how does this help me with logic at all well here is the step that will definitely help you with logic if this is something that you've really liked then you can hit here on the project menu and you can export this as a midi file ok 
Okay, so there's the name of it, and it's going to export the baseline, and it's going to export the chords. And now that is a file you can see down here in the lower corner of my screen. So I've simply got my logic open behind me here, and I'm going to drag this option from my Google Chrome. If it was in your downloads folder, same difference. And I'm going to say, sure, import the tempo because I don't have anything. Uh, if you already had something there, then by all means, don't worry about importing the tempo. But here is the same MIDI information that was just in the last project. But now it's in my logic file for me to begin to work with. There we go. Now it's in my project. Now it's for me to do with. I can change the instrument. So I can go in here and be like, hey, I want to make that a subby bass guitar instrument. I want to change this piano to be more of that Wurlitzer or clav sound, maybe. Uh, let's see. Nice dream clav. Here we go. <laughs> I'm not saying that's the best sound I've ever chosen on one of these uh, tutorials, but it is a sound to show you that you are just dealing with the MIDI information. Of course, you can get in and edit the MIDI information and do whatever else you want to with it because now it's just a regular old MIDI track and you can have all the fun with it you want. So I hope you found that helpful. So if you found that useful, if you did, feel free, like and subscribe because it does help us out in getting the word out there about what's going on. Thank you, guys. Happy music making.